So recently, there have been reports of a zombie breakout, so I've been putting together a defense squad that will protect me. I don't think this is gonna work. Released in 2009 by PopCap Games, Plants vs. Zombies is a tower defense game designed by George Fan. It originally started off as a sequel to Flying Bear Entertainment's earlier title, taking a more defense-based approach than the prior game. During that time, George Fan had been playing a lot of tower defense games in Warcraft 3, and doing so gave off this appeal that made him think of fond memories building forts out of sofa cushions. This was something he really wanted to capture the feel of with his next project. After realizing that Plants and Zombies made a much better theme for the game than Fish and Aliens, they shifted development from a sequel to an original title centered around the idea. Originally, the game was going to be titled Lawn of the Dead, a pun on the title of the film, Dawn of the Dead. The name was changed due to legal reasons. Various names were thought of before settling on the name Plants vs. Zombies. This wasn't the only thing changed due to legal reasons, however. The Dancing Zombie was originally designed after Michael Jackson from the Thriller music video. However, the state of Michael Jackson objected to its inclusion in the game after its release, and PopCap agreed to redesign it. Some of the game's inspirations include Tapper, which gave them the idea of the game's five lanes, the film Swiss Family Robinson, which inspired the idea of the potato mine, and the trading card game Magic the Gathering, which inspired the game's inclusion of seed packets. Plants vs. Zombies is a tower defense game where the player must defend their house from approaching zombies by planting differing types of plants. The game starts out in your front lawn with only one grid and one plant, the pea shooter. The pea shooter is your basic projectile plant, where every few seconds it will shoot out a single pea at each upcoming zombie. After you complete that level, you obtain the sunflower. How sun works in this game is it can fall from the sky or appear from any planted sunflower. Sun can then be used to pick a new plant from the list of seed packets above. The game's whole strategy is based around making sure you have enough sun at all times, and figuring out which plants are the most effective at any given moment. A few levels in, you'll be introduced to the walnut, which acts as a basic shield. The cherry bomb, first of many insta-kill plants, which can be used to one-hit kill a group of zombies. And a shovel you obtain from your neighbor, Crazy Dave. The shovel allows you to remove any plant you've already planted. Another thing you get introduced to in the first world is the minigames. Every fifth and tenth level spice up the gameplay by introducing new challenges. For the fifth level, it ranges from being a round of bowling, where you bowl with all nuts at zombies, to dealing with tiny but quicker versions of the zombies. The tenth level of each world, meanwhile, has it so you can only use plants given to you from a conveyor belt, which requires the player to think ahead with the placement of where they want to put the plants they are given. After completing the first area of the game, the time of day shifts to nighttime, and now you've lost the sun that came from the sky. However, don't you worry, our new pal Sunshroom is here to help. Starts out small with only 15 sun at a time, and then becomes a big boy and gives you 25 sun at a good rate. During the nighttime, you get introduced to a greater variety of zombies. While the ones in the morning consisted of a standard zombie, a bucket wearing zombie with strong defense, and a running zombie that will jump over anything in its path, the nighttime introduces you to a cranky guy who just wants to read his newspaper, copyright infringement, and his team of dancers, and my mortal enemy, the football zombie who can tower through most things in his path. However, that doesn't mean you're defenseless. You got more explosive plants, shrooms that will freeze enemies in place, a plant that will destroy any graves on your lawn, which normally will summon zombies at a later point. And of course, the most overpowered weapon in the entire game, the Puff Shroom. While it may have a short projectile range, Puff Shroom makes up for it with its fast recharge, zero sun cost, and the fact it can be spammed. It is the reason this game can actually be completed without any sun. Then there's the pool, which unlike the prior two section has six planes in total to utilize. However, two of them are in the water, which requires the player to plant a lily pad in order to plant any standard plants in there. However, if you know what you're doing and have the right plants, sometimes they're not even necessary. The pool levels really do a good job showcasing the plants and zombies that counter each other. Be it the snorkel zombies, which can mainly be taken out with tangle kelp, and the Zomboni, which drives onto the plane, leaving ice behind, but you can either use insta-kill plants on it when it comes close, or leave spikeweed out to stop it as soon as it comes. There's so many different options for how you can approach each zombie that approaches you. 
The third section also introduces you to the shop where you can purchase a number of items with the coins you receive from killing zombies or having lawn mowers still on your lawn at the end of each day. In terms of the main game, the shop is mostly useful for purchasing upgraded plants that can range from a twin sunflower to a corn missile. You can also purchase lawn mowers for the roof and pool, so you have that extra last defense. Lastly, there's also the rake, which will kill the first zombie that comes near your lawn, so you have more time to plant extra sunflowers at the start. Then the day shifts to night as fog appears. As each level passes, more and more fog will appear, blocking your view. So you'll need to use the plantern or blover to keep it away, on top of zombies floating from above. It really adds a new layer of death to the previous pool gameplay. Other new plants include the cactus which will grow tall and shoot out a projectile whenever the balloon zombie approaches. The split pea which shoots from behind which is very useful against the digger zombie. And the magnet shroom which will pull away any metallic objects making it incredibly useful against most types of zombies. Also, on a second playthrough, on 410 you can discover the mysterious Yeti Zombie. If the player manages to defeat the Yeti Zombie before he walks off the lawn, they will be rewarded with 5 diamonds. Then we reach the final area of the main game, the roof. The roof has a slope, so you can't use certain plants like Pea Shooter as easily. Instead, you get various different lob shot plants, ranging from corn that has a chance of stunning a zombie, or a melon that deals massive damage. Flower pots also become a focus as you have to plant them in order to place plants on the roof. On the bright side, you can also obtain the coffee bean, which will allow you to use nighttime plants in the daytime. All in all, it's a very challenging but engaging final area that has the main campaign stop right at the perfect place. However, that's not all. After completing 5-9, you receive a letter from Dr. Zomboss himself, as he prepares to bring his giant Zombot on top of the roof. Crazy Dave tries to remember his weakness but gets kidnapped by the zombies. Dr. Zomboss's fight is the perfect mixture of intense and rewarding. After he's taken down, the zombies officially call a truce and instead ask to do a music video. There's a Zombie on Your Lawn is one of the most charming and entertaining endings I've ever seen in a game. It's memorable, catchy, funny, and it feels like a satisfying ending to the main game. After you finish the main game, you can play through it again, however this time it's more difficult and Crazy Dave picks three of the plants you get to use. If there's one aspect of the game I really admire, it's the soundtrack. Every song works. Each one of them is very memorable and fits the tone of the location they play at very well. I really dig the calm vibe a lot of them have. It's very charming and distinct. My personal favorites are the roof theme, final boss track, and walnut bowling theme. However, there's not a single bad track in the OST, so you can't go wrong with any of them. It's been about, say, 8 minutes or so, and still no sign of any zombies. So might as well go over some trivia to pass the time. Did you know? The butter sound is genuine? They really threw butter at someone to make that sound effect feel just right. Never forget the time the sunflower appeared in World of Warcraft and would rarely sing. The wholesome material that I live for. When the game first released, PopCap released many live-action skits featuring the zombie on their YouTube channel. It was some pretty charming stuff and actually continued up until 2012. And of course, we have the holy grail of Plants vs. Zombies trivia, the December 2008 prototype. A lot of it is simply unfinished material, the usual. However, there are some stuff that never saw the light of day that was uncovered in this build. We have an unused music track that might have been for the title screen at one point. A unused zombie that has them walking a dog. Several unused plants, such as a time stopper that stops times for a few seconds, and another ice based plant that shares the same name as the plant that would go on to appear in Plants vs. Zombies 2. And lastly, a completely scrapped area of the game that seems to have been an elevated backyard. Brains. The zombies are coming. Well, that's my cue to seek shelter. Gotta go relatively quick. But first, I'll leave out a copy of Blue's Alphabet Book for the Game Boy Color to help with their hunger for education. After completing 3-2 of Adventure Mode, the player unlocks the option to play the first three minigames. The minigames range from extended versions of concepts from the main game to callbacks to the devs' previous titles. The minigames are easily the most creative part of the package, taking the core gameplay and offering new twists and turns to the core experience while capturing the same feel. 
A minigame like Portal Combat takes what you already know about utilizing plants like the pea shooter and has you have to think more carefully of where you place it because if a new portal appears in front of you, then it might no longer have the same use as before. Then there's minigames like Beagle Twist, which is inspired by one of PopCap's other titles, which plays more into the puzzle side of things, requiring the player to twist or rotate the plants in order to match them. The Zombotany minigames are a fun concept, having to go up against zombies that have the same abilities and strengths as you. The second one is easily one of the most challenging of the bunch when it comes to approaching what setup to use. And then there's Last Stand, where you get 5,000 sun at the start to make a lawn defense of your liking, but throughout the five waves, you cannot use any sunflowers, nor do you have any lawn mowers. It's a pretty cool challenge, and there's so many different types of strategies you can do. It's also really good for grinding money. However, some do rely a tad too much on RNG for my liking. Slot machine can be a pain and very tiring depending on your luck, as you might not get any plants to defend yourself or increase your sun total. Another one I could care less for is Pogo Party. The Pogo zombies are a complete and utter annoyance, so having an entire minigame centered around them and trying to bring out the tall nut and magnet room as quick as possible is not really my cup of tea. All in all, the minigames are one of the highlights of the game for me. After completing 4-6 of the adventure mode, the player unlocks the option to play the first few puzzle minigames, which there are two types of, an expansion of Vase Breaker from the main game and a new minigame called iZombie. Both consist of 9 minigames in an endless variation. Vase Breaker has you break open vases to obtain plants. Randomly breaking vases will increase the chances of zombies ganging up on you as each vase will either have a plant or zombie in it, except for the green vases which will always contain plants. Vasebreaker offers a new spin on the standard gameplay by letting the player control the speed at which the new plants or zombies arrive. Each level you clear gives you 250 coins. In iZombie, you play through the reversal of the main game scenario. Each time you're given a different set of zombies with the goal of eating the five brains on the other side of the lanes. Each run also has a random plant layout with the same basic theme, so it offers a lot of replayability. This mode also captures the same type of challenge when it comes to deciding which zombies you should use, as you only get a limited amount of sun from the sunflowers you can chomp on. Each level you clear gives you 1000 coins. Like the minigames, the puzzles are another highlight to go back to whenever replaying the game, even if I feel iZombie is far more interesting than Facebreaker is. Unlocked after completing the main game, survival is a mode where the player deals with continuous wave of zombies. Their plants are kept in between each round allowing the player to build a greater defense than they could in the main game. However, the amount of zombies is greater and more frequent. It's split into two types, normal and hard. Normal is 5 flags, 1 flag per round. Hard is 10 flags, 2 flags per round. Hard mode also brings in a lot of harder zombies as it goes on depending on the version you pick. Each area from the main game returns here. Day, night, pool, fog, and roof. This is the mode I tend to go back to the most if I'm not replaying the entire game. It's fun having a greater opportunity to mess around with the different setups while also offering a greater challenge than the main game does. After finishing all 10 survival runs, you unlock Endless, which is an endless version of the pool level. It's a pretty neat time waster and can be pretty fun trying to see how many flags you can survive for. Until you get to constant waves of my bestest friends, Giga and Space Ogre. I am never going for the immortal achievement again. That's not every mode in the game, however, as there's still stuff like Zen Garden, or exclusive to other versions of the game, versus mode. However, I'd like to save those for a different video and go more in depth on them at a later date. Even after all these years, Plants vs. Zombies still holds up very well. If there ever was a perfect game, I'd probably give that title to Plants vs. Zombies. It does what it sets out to do so well that I can always go back and replay the entire thing without a second thought. No matter the version, be it console, handheld, or PC, the game is still a blast through and through. As for the zombie breakout, yeah, it's still ongoing. Talking about Plants vs. Zombies for about 14 minutes doesn't really affect the state of reality. Please call for help. <laughs> Zombie, I'm a